What's going on, everyone? So, so far, all of the hype and excitement for the Lakers uh, going into the offseason and into this season and all of the acquisitions and the Lakers' insane depth and just like, oh, this is going to be a legit contending team has not translated yet. Now, Lakers are 3-5. and five. All five of their losses have been on the road, which is not a good thing. Now, a lot of it is just guys not playing with effort. A lot of it is guys not hitting shots. A lot of it is injury, right? Guys are playing out of position. Guys that aren't or weren't expected to do as much are now having to step up and do more. And guys are playing out of position, all kinds of stuff, right? So it's like, there are the idea and the hope of like, okay, if once everyone gets healthy and we kind of figure this out and get through this rough patch, right, and we kind of break through that wall, hopefully things kind of get back in order, the ship's right, and now we can go make our push and, and really show that, okay, this is a legit contending team. Like, the Lakers have shown flashes and, and moments and quarters and halves where they've looked absolutely brilliant and like the team that we want. And it is hard to fully gauge this team unless they are healthy, but it really does beg the question of, like, we got to get a third star. Now, obviously, there was the Alex Caruso reports, which I talked about here yesterday, um, and that the Lakers kind of regret letting Alex Caruso go, as well as, um, you know, they're interested in potentially trading for him again. Uh, but also we got that uh, report from Ramona Shelburne, uh, that supposedly the Lakers are already kind of keeping tabs and discussing trading for a potential third star. Now, I know a lot of people are, let's keep the depth and let's get depth rather than the third star. Well, the depth route isn't working right now. Um, granted, it's eight games. I get that. And I'm not, and the Lakers can't make a trade right now, even if they wanted to, right? The earliest they can make a trade is like December 15th. So, they're like, get comfortable. Lakers aren't making a trade anytime soon. But if between now and then, nothing's really changed or we're just kind of like, like just floating to stay alive, right? Like maybe you do go look to get that third star because the Lakers have enough depth to where they could do that and still have depth, right? They could go get another star and still have depth, right? Now, if the Lakers do want Caruso, like, one thing that comes to mind is, like, DeMar DeRozan. And, look, I think out of every potential star that becomes available, DeMar DeRozan is the most likely. Like, if I had to bet on a star coming to the Lakers and the Lakers trading for a star, it's far and away DeMar DeRozan. Just because, one, Chicago at some point is very likely going to tear it down. Two, DeMar DeRozan is a free agent after this year. So how many teams are going to trade for him and run the risk of him leaving? Uh, you know, three, like how many teams are looking at DeMar DeRozan as the missing piece and are willing to give up assets to go and acquire him? He's not making that like that insane money. He's only making he's making like twenty eight and a half million, give or take something like that off the top of my head. But, you know, how many teams have the assets and pieces to go and trade for him and and not kind of tear down what they're trying to do? Right? Like the Lakers, it checks every box, right? DeMar DeRozan he would solve a lot of the Lakers' issues. Just a consistent go-to scorer, a closer in the clutch down the stretch, a guy that can shoot over the top, which the Lakers need probably more than anything, right? Um, DeMar DeRozan wants to be a Laker. He's made that extremely apparent. So you don't have to worry about him leaving you after this season. He's also been very reliable and plays you know, like 70 games a year, which is good considering you don't have Anthony Davis and LeBron James, very likely both missing 20-plus games. So DeMar DeRozan, I just think, makes the most sense, is the most likely, and I do think fixes a lot, right? Like, the Lakers aren't going to be able to do a trade that's the the total cure-all, just based on what we've seen. Like, going, like even if they go get somebody like a, a Kyrie Irving, right? Like, Kyrie would be fantastic. And, you know, if Dallas starts to implode, like, Dallas has looked good so far, but a lot of it has just been Luka's heroics. But Kyrie and Luka still look very awkward and out of sorts. Like, they don't look the way that you hope that they do. Now, it's still early. Maybe they figure that out. But if they don't and Kyrie wants out or, you know, it becomes a mess or whatever, 
right? Like, the Lakers could go and trade for Kyrie, but even Kyrie, he's not going to fix everything because he's not going to fix your rebounding issue. He's not going to fix your effort, right? Your, your hustle, your energy. Like, he's not fixing everything. I mean, the idea is like, well, maybe it does, right? Like, because again, it goes gives you that third star, gives you that consistency, that go-to score, that all the things that the Lakers need. But hopefully it also kind of lights a fire under the remaining guys on the team where it's like, okay, you kind of got like, you got this new shiny toy that's coming in to, to make the garage look better, right? Like it's just like that could add some fire and maybe kind of raise everyone's spirits and energy. But I definitely think it's, it's one of those things where it's, it's looking like the Lakers are going to need a third star. Um, now, you don't just trade just to trade. Which Rob Polinka, look, he has shown enough that he's not just going to do that. If the right deal is on the table that makes sense, then you do it. right? Which Rob Polinka probably would do it regardless. Right? If you could get Kyrie for a reasonable package, you go get Kyrie for that reasonable package. If you can get DeMar DeRozan for a reasonable package, you go get DeMar DeRozan for a reasonable package. Right? Like... You, you do it. Now, the problem is, is that the Lakers would also very likely be limited on the stars that they could potentially get, right? Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that a, a, some star won't become available that would, like, like Zach Levine makes a world of sense for the Lakers. But, I mean, more sense than, like, a DeMar DeRozan or anything, right? Like, but in reality, like, Zach Levine, we just don't have the assets to go and trade for him. Very limited on what we can give up, right? Like, Donovan Mitchell could end up becoming available. Cavs have been a sinking ship so far this season, right? And they've really struggled. So it's not out of the realm of possibility that, like, hey, Donovan Mitchell, I want out now rather than waiting an extra year or whatever. Um, So get me out now, blah, blah, blah. Maybe that happens, right? But again, the Lakers don't have the assets to go and trade for Donovan Mitchell. They just don't like, like maybe if Mitchell again comes out and says like, I only want to play for the Lakers and kind of tries to pull a Damian Lillard, then maybe, but we've seen how that looks, right? Like, so I just, I don't want, like, I see a lot of people throwing out, Nate, well, what about this? Or like, what about Embiid? What about like, yeah, if they become available and the Lakers can get them, then sure, absolutely. You go get them. But the reality is you're probably not. Because you're going to have all these other teams trying to outbid and acquire the same player. And most teams that have the ability to do so, the Knicks, the Thunder, like these teams, they have just much more assets than the Lakers do. So realistically, it's going to be a like a Kyrie or DeMar DeRozan, right? Maybe Trey Young says he does, but I'm not like, I. Personally, I kind of want the Lakers to stay as far away from Trey Young. Like, if the Lakers traded for him, I wouldn't be like super upset about it. But I just I think the Lakers should stay away from Trey Young. But more likely than not, you're probably limited to like if Kyrie becomes available and then Demar Derozan. And that's why I default to Demar Derozan because again, like it's just he's not going to cost as much as these other guys. Most of these other teams are not going to try to outbid and go in a bidding war with Demar Derozan. It's the worst kept secret in the league that DeMar DeRozan wants to go home and play for the Lakers. So that in and of itself might just deter guys like trying to make a trade for DeMar. Um, And I don't think like people would look at most people. I don't think would look at DeMar as like, oh, that that's the move that puts the Lakers over the top. But I actually think it would. Right. Because I think it just would give them the firepower to, to compete with some of these teams you don't really, it's not helping you defensively, but like neither is D'Lo or Reeves or anybody like that. And, you know, it, you're you're probably getting him a lot cheaper than you would anyone else, right? And you could get more of a package, right? Like I am, I really like the idea of Caruso, DeMar, and Andre Drummond, right? Go trade, if you have to, trade D'Lo, right? I've seen a lot of people say like, oh, like, you know, trade Gabe Vincent, like, it doesn't make sense, like, Gabe Vincent doesn't make sense for 
the uh, for the for the Bulls because it's like they're trading Alex Caruso to get a worse Alex Caruso, right? And somebody that's locked up for three years. Yeah, like D'Lo is at least like D'Lo is a better player for one and two. D'Lo could absolutely just he just opt out, right? And he could leave, and then you free up cap space, right? So you're probably like I would look at it like trade D'Lo. You know, if you have to give up a Rui, right? So go like D'Lo, Rui, and like a Jalen Hood Shafino or like a Maxwell Lewis or something like that, and then a first round pick, and go get DeMar Caruso and Drummond, right? You, you solve your center issue, you solve your rebounding issue because Drummond can absolutely pull in boards. You get some more perimeter defense and help in Caruso, um, and you get that go to just consistent scorer that the Lakers desperately need. It's a win-win, right? Like, it would suck to see Rui go, suck to see D'Lo go, stuff like that, but, like, if you win a championship, no one's going to care, right? If the Lakers end up winning a championship because of that, like, no one's going to be like, oh, man, we should have kept Rui. No, it's like, hey, we just got an NBA championship. So I just, it it's looking more and more likely, like, the Lakers are going to have to make a trade at some point, unless they turn it around. Now, they still have the talent. They still have the ability. You know, once everyone's back and healthy, maybe they figure it out. Maybe they do turn around. I'm I'm hoping that they do. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? Do you think the Lakers, yes, they need a third star? Do you think the Lakers should trade for third star? What's the third star that you think is most likely to come to the Lakers? What's the third star, you know, just for fun, in the comments, let me know. Uh, what's the third star that you would that you hope the Lakers trade for. Um, again, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below.